Today we're going to do a, uh, a quick tutorial on how to use the Bend tool uh, as well as create 3D text. Here's an example of utilizing these tools. Um, this is the class ring I built for myself. Uh, we will be moving kind of quickly so you may want to watch this a second or third time. Just keep in mind um, the key to using the Bend tool is giving it plenty of information to manipulate. Um, this means vertices. Uh, the way to get vertices, uh, I'll show you here in a second, um, is to uh, uh, multiply the amount of segments. Um, if you don't have enough segments, as you can see here, uh, when you try to use the curvature part of the bend tool, it doesn't do anything for you but sway the object back and forth and slightly manipulate it. Uh, now we're going to create an object uh, that has lots of information that we can bend. Uh, you can always just go to the attributes and uh, raise the amount of subdivisions in the area you want to bend. Um, you can then go to the quick toolbar, uh, click deformation tab, and nonlinear bend. At this point, now you see the adjustments on the side. Um, you have an upper and lower area that you can adjust on it. It calls it high and low. Um, you can also manipulate the strength of the curvature by changing its amount. Uh, you can do positive and negative curvature bends. Um, this will allow you to kind of manipulate it back and forth and let you see uh, which shape's really best for you. Um, now you can also use the uh, regular um, tools on, like you would use on your object to uh, change its position, scale, or rotation. Uh, these can all help you to make sure that you get the exact uh, curvature that you're looking for. Um, next we're going to go ahead and use a, a little bit more complex object here and create something a little bit more uh, detailed. Alright, so I'm going to be using uh, multiple bends on this plate here. Um, and I'm going to show you that by using these multiple different um, bends, you can create a really nice, unique object. Um, it's, uh, and it's really not that, that hard to use, as where if you try to manipulate the information on its own, um, you might run into um, issues of it not looking as clean uh, as you might be wanting to, to, to have as your result. Uh, now I've utilized uh, multiple bins on my object here. Um, this has allowed it to create a nice rippled uh, texture. Um, be uh, real interesting to get some text to wrap onto that. Uh, so first thing we need to do is go ahead and duplicate it. This way we'll get rid of all of the excess information of these curves and such. Um, and then you can just use the outliner and go ahead and delete the original object and just keep the duplicate that is now a simple object in the shape that you had already created. Now go up to the Create tab and select the box next to text. It'll bring up the window. Uh, it allows you to fill in what text you would like to put in there. Um, and then you can also click on the caret next to um, the text and go ahead and choose a different font. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do my name in Wingdings, see what kind of characters we get. And I'll just go ahead and get that wrapped to my object. After you've created your text, just go to the Polygons tab in the Quick Links and go ahead and uh, select that you want to extrude um, and go ahead and just go give your characters a, a good bit of depth. Um, now after you've done this, uh, some of them will get off track. Uh, all you got to do is switch back over to Object Mode and select each one of the letters that's out of place. They will usually be uh, equally uh, displaced. Um, and you just move those particular letters back in line. Um, and then you just combine all of the letters together, uh, creating one object out of all of them. Uh, now from here is where you can take and move it around to where you want to position it on your object and begin to uh, bend it to fit the object. Uh, switch over to your wireframe and it allows you to go ahead and see where your inconsistencies are between the two objects meeting. Um, so anywhere where it lifts up above the surface or dips down on underneath the surface, uh, now you can do the final tweaks that it'll take to make sure that your object ends up becoming um, the right shape for you. Um, once you have achieved the exact uh, uh, bend that you need, then all you have to do is once again just take and duplicate the object and delete the um, original. This way you're once again only dealing with one simplized object. Um, you now select both of them and you can go up to Mesh, click on Booleans and do Difference. Uh, difference will now allow you to uh, basically have taken all of that text that is sunk into it and now that has been erased from the information on the plate. 
giving you a nice engraved look. Um, if you did want it to still protrude, then you would actually want to hit booleans and union. This would create both of the um, outside exteriors of those objects into one object with one exterior. And here are a couple more objects that I have created using these tools. Uh, the first is a set of four pillars that I created um, and created these nice organic forms. Um, first, I, uh, I just made my standard columns that were hollowed out, bullied out some holes, and then manipulated it using the bin tool. Uh, the second one here is um, one I just uh, created using a simple text for WVU Sculpture. Um, and once I bullied it out completely through one um, flat piece of um, um, material, then I was able to manipulate that piece and create a nice waved, um, very, very clean looking uh, text piece. That is how you use the 3D nonlinear bin tool. Uh, I hope this helps you in your future model making. Um, thank you for watching.